What should I draw? I don't know what to draw. These are the problems that I hear a lot of people struggling with, particularly people who are just starting to make art. I'm Danny Gregory, and I'm going to give you some tips on how to overcome this huge problem and how to get down to making art right away. So as you can see, perhaps behind me, I have been filling sketchbooks with ideas for a really long time. And today I want to jump in and pull out a bunch of examples to show you the kinds of things I make art about so that I think will be a guide for you. And there's nothing more fun than going back and flipping through the pages and reliving decades of drawing experiences and finding perfect examples to show you what I think you should try drawing. The reason we struggle with this is that we think that art has to be a certain thing. You go to a museum, what do you see? You see portraits, and you see landscapes, and you see abstractions, and you see uh, bowls of fruit, and you see stories from the Bible, and you see hist great historical events, and you think, it's really important that I make a picture about something that has some significance that matters, or else I'm just wasting my time and my talent and my art supplies. But the fact is that Art is really about expressing who you are and how you see the world. And the, there are so many different ways that we can do that, so many different kinds of stories we can tell. We don't have to be limited to the things that you think of as classic, appropriate subject matter. You can make art about anything, and it can be awesome. And the most important thing is, particularly for those of us who are making art because just because we enjoy it, is to find subjects that we find personally interesting. Not to think about what all other people think of it, but what do you think is interesting? What is interesting to look at? But also what is interesting to make? Because the fact is that I can find some subject that seems lofty and I can really struggle with trying to evoke it in the right way. And that just sucks all the fun out of the process of doing a drawing, I'm fretting so much about, oh, am I doing it the right way? Is this, does it really look like whoever it is that I'm trying to draw, all these things, we want to eliminate those so that we can just make art that's fun to make, that feels natural, that feels authentic to us and our experiences. And that's also going to be the art that's going to have the most impact for people looking at it, because they're going to get that this is something that came from a genuine place in you. Okay, so let's start with, I think, the most interesting subject, the most diverse subject, and the easiest subject, which is to draw whatever is in front of you. Just open your sketchbook, look around for 10 seconds, and just draw whatever you see. The mess on my desk, the clutter in the corner, art supplies in the studio, my wife's stuff on the shelf, the lamp on the wall, bookshelves, what's in my pocket, all of it. My shoes, my socks, the bathroom, toothbrushes, a door handle. What's in the fridge? A raspberry. What's on the table? Or that table? What am I having for lunch? Hey, some snacks. A bagel, another bagel. Looking out the window. Coffee's almost ready. Don't forget to wash up. Let's go in the backyard. Hey, there's my wife. A nice bike. Another nice bike. You can draw while being a passenger. Even on a plane. Ordinary things can be even more interesting when you find some commonality to them. What I call a collection. Find a bunch of things with a similar theme and draw them together. Like every chair in my house, or some suntan lotion, or orange soda in all its variations. A pheasant, looking pleasant. Walnuts, they're all different. Dogs in coats. Shopping for Christmas on Canal Street. Garbage that was thrown away on my street. Every shirt I own and every pair of pants, all the shoes in the house, my favorite pens, and more favorite pens, 
My favorite candy from when I was a kid. Birds. I love birds. Dogs. I love dogs too. My son taking drum lessons. Every hairstyle I've had in my entire life. Lots and lots of drawings of the same cup of tea. I made an entire video about that. You can see it here. Bones. Go to a museum. Bones. Dinosaurs. All bones. All right, we've drawn things. Now let's draw places. Again, they don't have to be beautiful. They don't have to be exotic. They don't have to be full of meaning. They can just be whatever the corner is across from where you're sitting at a cafe or parked in your car or looking out the window or maybe when you're on vacation and you see something fantastic. Let's look at some street corners. This is Prague. This is Los Angeles. This is Amsterdam and more Amsterdam. This is New York City. This is downtown New York City. The village, the village, a bar, another bar. Many views of the same church. The Louvre in Paris. A synagogue. A jazz bar. A random street corner. The meatpacking district. Brunching on the Bowery, checking out Bleecker Street. A house in Santa Monica. Mickey D's. A bike. A rooftop. Jefferson Market Library. Washington, D.C. A different style. Out the parking lot. Skating in the park. Wilshire Boulevard. More palm trees. And Oliveira Street. How do you draw people? There are all kinds of methodologies and techniques and ways of doing it and special tools. The way I draw people is by drawing people, a lot of people. And over time, it becomes easier and easier. So I just gather up old yearbooks and magazines and newspapers and pictures on the web and family photographs and old albums. And I just draw all these faces and they're all fascinating. I devoted this sketchbook just to drawings of men in ink and watercolor. And some of them are from old mug shots, from various sources of uh, just random people. I don't know who any of these guys are, but oh, there's a monkey. But they're all interesting to look at and to draw. Here's a sketchbook full of a lot of pictures from old photo albums from my family, as me as a kid. And just practicing doing the same stuff in black and white, cross hatching. Found, whenever I find a book of portraits of people, I use it as reference. And particularly if they're great photographs, it's a friend of mine and another friend and a whole bunch of friends. Here's some old photos, colorized. Wherever I go and there's crowds of people standing around, pull out my sketchbook and just draw people in the park, people waiting in line, people in a restaurant, just draw little faces. Or when I'm watching TV, I think this might be from Breaking Bad. And uh, just drawing while watching. More people hanging out. This is a whole sketchbook I made of just men wearing white shirts. Gray paper, black ink, white paint. And of course, I draw a lot of self-portraits as well because I am a subject that is always available to draw and I draw myself in lots of different ways and it helps me to practice drawing paces. So there you have it, lots of totally different things and they just help me to perfect my drawing style, my drawing ability, my drawing technique, how I use different materials. Some of these drawings are good. Some of them suck. What matters is that they are all of the reps that I've done at the drawing gym. Those are all the workouts that I've had 
over the years, and there's so many more sketchbooks behind me that I'm going to share with you over time. But my advice to you is whatever it is you want to draw, practice drawing everything. Even if you want to just draw from your imagination, it helps to build a foundation of how do you draw a superhero? Well, you don't have him posing for you, but you learn how to draw people. You can study anatomy or you can just draw people doing things, moving and going to different places. A lot of these different subjects basically use the same techniques. And those are techniques that I've been teaching in my series of tutorials called How to Draw. Hopefully you have had a chance to go through those. And another important thing about this approach to drawing that I'm sharing with you is it helps you to get better without having the drudgery of practice. Yes, you're practicing, but it doesn't feel like practice. It doesn't feel like playing scales on the piano. It just feels like making art and creating and expressing yourself. So this takes away the struggle as to what you're drawing because it really doesn't matter what you're drawing. What matters is that you are drawing and that you're enjoying it and that you're doing it a lot. And if you create 100 drawings, maybe one of them will be a masterpiece. It doesn't really matter as long as you're enjoying each line that you draw each page that you fill. That is my approach to drawing, and I hope it'll become yours too. Start by just drawing a lot, and eventually you will come up with new ideas for new images that right now you're not even prepared to think of. All this comes about from having drawn lots of street corners, so now I can draw any house, I can draw any building, I can draw a plane or a car, I can draw any big object, it doesn't really matter. And I've drawn so many different people that I can sit down and not feel intimidated. All my drawings aren't perfect likenesses, but you know, you win a few, you lose a few. So I hope that this is encouraging to you. And I hope that you will just start by drawing literally what's in front of you. Draw the computer with this video on it. Draw my face on the screen if you want. Draw the pens on the table. Draw your hand. It doesn't matter what you draw matters is that you draw. I hope you enjoy yourself and I'll see you in a future video. Bye-bye.